Gram Seva Sang is trying to build a new village. What is a new village? How different is this new village uh, from the old village? What is the relationship of this new village with the city? The new village is going to be constructed by taking the good elements from both the city and the village. The city has developed good mind for the last many, many centuries. Great signs, idea of socialism, idea of equity, democracy, all this uh, came through the city. The village retained hand making, retained agriculture and through this retained culture. And through all this, it retained a close proximity with nature. Today, in this age of ecological disasters, we are desperately wanting to go back to nature, our inner nature and the outer nature. You know, our instinct, natural instinct, and the natural forest that is available still available to some extent in the village there are also bad things in both these systems you know the bad thing in the city system is easy life how is this easy life made by using machines by using automation by exploiting nature feeding it in the machine feeding it into the market and create easiness the city almost uh, believed that the easy life is civilized life today gradually we are realizing that the easy life is not civilized life the easy life in fact is available only to a handful of people and that handful of people are becoming smaller and smaller by the day and the larger sections of the society even in the city is becoming poorer and poorer. So that's the bad thing about the city. The bad thing about the village is that over the centuries, last century, several centuries, it developed a lot of social systems where, which were very oppressive. You know, uh, caste system, gender inequality, untouchability, a uh, lot of superstition and all this. So when we say we want to bring the good of the city and the good of the village, we mean we bring the mind of the city and the hand of the village. I am using these two words as metaphors. The mind is a metaphor for the city. The mind is the metaphor for the best of the city. The hand is the metaphor for the best in the village. Hand working, hand making, hard working, you know, is all connected with the village. That is good about the village. That has to be respected in the village. You know, because it is the hand-working people, hard-working people, the peasant, the fisher person, the weaver, is the one who has retained connectivity with the past. All our languages, all our memories, all our experiences, all our culture is still there with them. And it is not there with the city. 
the city in fact is losing memory because the city is changing so fast all the great mythology in all the popular art the villain is always housed in a secluded city the villain is always housed in a city which is uh, surrounded by salt water with the sea and it is surrounded by uh, fortress you know you take uh, even modern uh, popular uh, stories take bantam city for example you know the batman of uh, uh, the batman's bantam city it's completely devoid of nature what is ram uh, ram rajya in uh, ramayana like the yin and yang of the chinese uh, philosophy we have this uh, uh, combination called prakriti and purusha prakriti is nature purusha means the human prakriti and purusha are nature and human human being should always stay in loving harmony with each other that is what this principle says like the yin and yang principle say ramayana is the story ramayana makes this prakriti purusha into a metaphor and sita represents prakriti rama pra- pra- represents purusha and, and the story goes finally when uh, this imagined uh, new civilization called ram rajya is constructed it has a balance in fact rama and sita spent 14 years in the jungle in the midst of nature in the midst of uh, animal life uh, in inside many ashrams and understand this understand this uh, thing they are also fighting a city the city of lanka what rama and sita does is to fight the city and fight the leader of the city or the villain who is residing in that city ravana by using nature the army that goes with uh, rama is a nature army it's a green army there are monkeys there are squirrels there are uh, you know various animals fighting for rama on his side on ravana's side there is magic there is machine there is uh, uh, you know money and uh, power and all that interestingly in ramayana the natural power defeats the money power defeats the villain and releases nature sita is a metaphor for nature for uh, gandhi ji this metaphor became very important because through this metaphor he understood that a freedom struggle is not just an external struggle but also an internal struggle you know there is nature inside you there is nature outside you if you want to recover nature outside of you you have to first recover the nature that is inside you and this can only be done through the ashram life or through the life of uh, samyama of restraint so look at how gandhi ji constructs it on the one hand he takes uh, the notion of restraint and samyama which is considered uh, popularly as as a dharmic construction and on the other hand he takes a political construction which is freedom uh, constitutional uh, freedom and all that and he brings it together that is ram rajya gandhi ji was inspired by ram rajya of ramayana in calling it gram swaraj what are we doing today we are only concentrating on political work 
We are only concentrating on the constitutional work. We are only concentrating on making rules. We are only concentrating on uh, making the police bigger, the judiciary bigger, the parliament the bigger. We are piling up rules and rules and rules and rules. New legislations are brought every day because the old is failing. The more the legislation, the more difficult it is for an ordinary person to live um, uh, under that. But the Ravanas of the world will know how to handle one million legislations. They just don't care because they just corrupt you and get away with it. The Gram Seva Sang is happening a hundred years after Gandhiji, almost a hundred years after Gandhiji. In this hundred years, this balance, the yin and yang or the prakriti purusha balance has got uh, imbalanced many, 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 many times. The Purusha has become much, much, much more uh, villainous than Ravana. The city has become uh, a hundred times more bigger than Lanka. In this situation, we feel that the balance can only be brought by going back to the city, to the village because it's the village, it is the nature which is completely in danger today. That's why we have called our uh, organization Gram Seva Sang. Gram Seva Sang instead is going to concentrate on the constructive work, the socio-cultural work of building confidence amongst various sections of the impoverished society, amongst tribals, amongst peasants, amongst uh, craftspeople, amongst women, amongst children, amongst old people, amongst uh, uh, you know, mentally retarded people, amongst sexual minorities. There have been organizations which have been working with them. What Gram Seva Sangh will do is to bring them together not bring them together physically. It's not possible. Because they are spread out and they better be spread out. So it's a very, uh, very new way of looking at bringing people together. You don't physically bring them together. You don't physically pull them out of their uh, excellent constructive work. But instead say that, look, you are doing your constructive work. You are... Uh, working in a specific sector, do that and yet let's come together here in our minds and let's all pitch in our own little effort so that the people of this country understand that only the corrupt politician is not the reality but there is another reality which is available today. Gram Seva Sangh has a very simple solution to this problem. And that is, look, there is an ecological crisis. The ecological crisis has become a psychological crisis. It has become a social crisis. The city has become very oppressive. And so a section of the enlightened youth of the city are wanting to get out. They want to go into the village, but they don't know how to handle the village. They don't know how to handle hard life. They don't know how to handle physical labor. They don't know how to handle nature. They don't know how to handle the village people. Use them as activists. Train them as activists. Handhold them to go to the village. Create institutions or use already available institutions of constructive work that are spread in you know, different parts of the country as middling agencies for this uh, city youth to go and convert them into an army of people for constructing the new village. Gram Seva Sang 
is not going to be built by the gram people only, the village people only. They cannot. It has to be built by a joint action of the city enlightened youth and the village people. The village today has lost its confidence. You know, the village has become dead inside. They are scared because they don't have jobs. They don't have anything to eat. They are just running away from the village in hordes and hordes. They are coming to the city. They are made to come to the city. So before we give them uh, bread or before we tell them that, look, you can make your own uh, life, you have to first give them confidence. And who will give them confidence? It's these city people, by going to the village and by taking up uh, hard work and by taking up various activities, will bring confidence into the village. Once this confidence happens, nothing is going to stop the uh, new world. Because with confidence, the village people are still the majority of the people. The village people still have all the things that makes good life. They have land, they have rivers, they have forests. Degraded, yes, but they still have them. And then with the help of the mind of the city, the young mind of the city, which has in it socialism, uh, you, you know, gender equality, uh, justice, democracy. So bring the two together, it will work.